Murray with sport. And I'm Kimberly Fletcher with your weather. Let's tell you what's making the news tonight. Cabinet rejects recommendations to increase parliamentarians' salaries. The SRC's report is deemed unacceptable. With political campaigning underway, analysts dismiss the possibility of a general election anytime soon. WASA to ramp up production and engage private contractors to address water shortages across the country. Coming up in sport, returning champions Sine Fedrick and Tafari Waldron headline a 68-member TNT team for this year's Curve to Games. Generally sunny and hazy conditions were experienced today with temperatures reaching 32.3 degrees Celsius. I'll give you all the details in tonight's weather forecast. No pay hike for the Prime Minister and other public office holders, at least for now. Cabinet has rejected the report from the Salaries Review Commission, which included proposals for the salary increases. Today, the Finance Minister revealed that there were anomalies with the report and that the body now has to review the concerns flagged, but did not say whether they expected a higher, lower or any salary increase proposal at all. Jesse Ramdeo explains. A proposal for salary increases for the president, prime minister, opposition leader, as well as other senior state officials has been shelved pending a review. The 117th report of the SRC is unacceptable because of the serious and inexplicable anomalies that have emerged in the recommendations in the report. On Wednesday, Finance Minister Komimba took aim at the Salaries Review Commission and targeted irregularities with its report. Only just weeks prior, the minister laid the commission's findings in Parliament, which recommended a more than 30% salary hike for various office holders. At the time, there was public debate over the timeliness for the pay increases, with several unions calling for them to receive the same 4% increase as public servants. Imbert contended that following consideration, there were views that the report was flawed. In some instances, the recommendations appear to be irrational on the face of it. It appears that the foreign consultants employed by the SRC were not okura with the full range of the duties, responsibilities, challenges, decision-making and impact in Trinidad and Tobago of several persons under the purview of the SRC. In some cases, there was insufficient consultation with stakeholders. Among those pointing to the report's shortfall was the Chief Justice, who in a letter to the Prime Minister pointed to several issues including... Our consideration of the 117th SRC report reveals that the report is A, opaque in its methodology, B, replete with internal inconsistencies, C, devoid of justifications for its recommendations for the higher judiciary and other judicial officers, offices, D, premised on flawed, misleading and in some cases plainly wrong assumptions. The finance minister said it is necessary to alert the commission to the list of inconsistencies and that a revised report be prepared. Embert, however, noted that if within two months the anomalies still existed in the revised recommendations of the SRC, the cabinet will make appropriate adjustments to the recommendations. Jesse Ramdeo, CNC3 News. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley reminds citizens that it has been 15 years since anyone in this country paid property tax, which is a requirement by law. The Prime Minister was responding to a question posed to him during conversations with the Prime Minister at the Skiffle Bunch Panyard in San Fernando last night. One person in the audience suggested to the Prime Minister that the property tax be implemented incrementally to ease the burden on citizens, adding that its implementation could cost the PNM the next general election. However, the Prime Minister said citizens have th saved thousands of dollars from not paying the tax over the last 15 years, and suggestions that it could influence the outcome of the 2025 general election are unjustified. I know nobody likes to pay tax. But if that is the basis on which we will change the government and put it in the hands of other people who will wreck and ruin the country, let it be said that it will be done with your eyes wide open. The Prime Minister lamented that for some citizens, there will never be a good time to implement the tax and said the rate now is lower than before. The way this tax is being held up as a burden, I think it is a little, a little overdone. 
especially if after 15 years you have been given that break. And when you said to me, well, now is not the right time, I know what that means. It will never be the right time. Dr. Rowley reminded citizens that there are provisions for those who believe that they have been unfairly evaluated. He also reiterated that the implementation of the tax will save this country from the International Monetary Fund. While both the government and opposition have begun election campaigning, political analysts tell citizens don't get too excited because a general election may not be anytime soon. Speaking to CNC3 News today, Dr. Shane Mohammed says a snap election is out of the question because neither the government nor the opposition is prepared to go to the polls. And if the election bell is rung before its time, he says this could be disastrous. I don't believe that a snap election that has been, you know, circulated over time is going to happen. I think there's a lot that the government needs to achieve in terms of its key deliverables. There's not any time soon that we can look forward to a general election before 2025. And Dr. Bishnu Raghunath also says he's not convinced Dr. Rowley is ready for a general election. He believes Dr. Rowley was taken by surprise when the opposition featured regional politicians on their platform. But the political analyst isn't convinced that the election will be called soon. I am not convinced that he is yet ready to move in that direction. This will seemingly increase the, the political tempo in the country. And I think that's basically where we headed. But as to whether we reach that stage yet where an election date is imminent, no, I don't think we've reached there yet. Dr. Raghunath reminded that the Prime Minister can call the election any time before December 2025. Well, there are varying views from the public on whether the Prime Minister should actually call elections earlier than its constitutional deadline in 2025. Here's tonight's People Say segment. Well, he do have a reason to call an early election because as far as I see, Mr. Keith Christopher Rowley is doing a good job. Now he's just a man, he's not like, you know, go to anything and we just have to have patience and watch. Yes, I'll prefer he do that. Yes. Because it have too much I think going on. It's not because of the crime, but it's a lot. It's a lot going on. No, I do not. I think after hearing him last night on television, he said they, they are doing a lot of work. And the impression I got from his conversation is that they intend to finish what they started. To, to be honest, the election is not a problem. You know? it's, how the country go, it's how the country going. That, that, that should be the more important thing to do right now, study how the country going and try to build back the economy. Yes, because it's plenty trouble, plenty pressure in this country right now going on. Plenty things going on now. That's the reason why we call our holy lecture to see what it is that they could do or somebody else could come and do for the country. I don't believe so, um, knowing that we like power and I believe we should because we all are suffering now. Okay? So, but I don't believe, I believe we carry down to the last. Still to come in the news, Tobago experiences a case of deja vu. Weeks after cleaning up an oil spill, its shores are once again blanketed with the bunker fuel. Meanwhile, opposition members take the Prime Minister to task for calling businessman and politician Alan Chastenay a tropical Trump. Coming up in sport, we bring you the highlights from day two of the Milo Games. Construct it right, build it strong with Bagwan Singh's manufacturing division. Get the right products for your building needs from our construction department, decking sheets, BRC rolls and mats, rebar fabrication from the roofing department. Cover it strong with purlins, flashings, ridging, alusink, and pre-painted roofing sheets. We can customize all items at any length and size to suit your requirements. Products available exclusively at Bagwan Singh's Port of Spain and Chaguanas. Building value every day. Tush.
strengthen your immune system, you need to nourish your body with foods rich in antioxidants. Exercise regularly and build your immunity with supportive nutrients. That's why the experts at Jameson created products for immune support made with pure ingredients. For 100 years, Jameson has helped take care of you and your family. At Jameson, your wellness will always be our goal. Jameson, here for your health. Communities in East Trinidad are complaining of a scarcity of water. Today, our team of Che Tikasing and Otto Carrington visited some of those areas to speak with residents. Their experiences are part of the reason Public Utilities Minister Marvin Gonzalez has ordered the water production be increased to 65 million gallons to address water shortages currently faced by several communities during this harsh dry season. As the clock struck midnight, a water restriction mandated by law came into effect, aiming at conservation efforts. However, despite these measures, many communities across Trinidad and Tobago are grappling with severe water shortages. The reason being this unforgiving dry season, which has significantly depleted Wasa's water reserves. We went to Talparo and parts of Sangre Grande where residents have endured weeks without a reliable supply of water. The Public Utilities Minister Marvin Gonzalez in Parliament says he has directed WASA to intensify its operations to provide much needed assistance to the affected areas. We have already taken a decision to increase um, production at the Karani Arena Dam by 65 million gallons of water on a daily basis as well as Navet. And therefore the communities, as mentioned by the Honourable Member, those communities on the extremities will experience an improvement. This brought little relief to Victor Booker, who has endured a staggering 10 weeks without water in his pipes. While some low-lying areas in Talparo do receive water, delivery via truck-borne supply takes weeks to materialize. Well, this issue here is at the pumping station. I just checked with the, someone in there and they said they had the valve, not the valve, the, uh, the filter. The filter is not working. Until they get that filter, the pump can't push any water. To the residents. The minister says WASA is adding more contractors to their roster. I've already given WASA the instructions to ramp up water trucking activities to target those communities that you've mentioned, those communities in the extremity. In Sangre Grande, specifically in the Babwande village, Amina Hanif has had no water since January. She says she cannot even send her children to school as a result. In protest, she is refusing to pay her bill, but now she has been barred from receiving water until she pays the arrears. Right as I go into my stress, I cannot wash, I cannot cook properly. I have wares heaping up, on pot on top, pot heaping up, child clothes heaping up, bed sheet dirty. You know, we're getting some, some itchings in my skin, we're getting rashy child too. I mean, you know, there is no water. The Sangre Grande Regional Corporation Chairman Kenwin Phillip with Councillor for the area Nasa Hosang visited the family. He says the corporation is not able to assist the Burgess because they only have one filling bay for their water trucks and a lack of supply at their filling station. Otto Carrington, CNC3 News. Three weeks after Tobago cleaned up the oil spill along the shore in Scarborough, authorities were forced to return to the area today after a layer of bunker fuel blanketed the shore once again. Director of the Tobago Emergency Management Agency, Alan Stewart, confirms that the fuel deposits washed into the sea from between the rocks. We recognize that the hydrocarbon sometimes is lodged onto the rocks. And very high humidity periods when the sun is extremely hot. The hydrocarbons that is on the rock become very soft, melt, and when you have a high tide condition, it flushes back into the sea. When CNC3 News went to the area today, bags filled with bunker fuel lined the pavement. Stewart says the THA plans to use seawater or citrus formula to flush the oil before it affects the shores again. Meanwhile, the ODPM says the recent Scarborough spill was brought quickly under control. Tomorrow will mark one month since the barge Gulf Stream ran aground into a, coral, into a coal reef just off the coast of Cove, threatening the island's ecosystem and livelihood. 
Meanwhile, Trinidad and Tobago is nowhere close to filing legal proceedings against the culprits behind the February 7th oil spill, which has polluted the southwestern coast of Tobago and spread throughout the southern Caribbean. Although the spillage of bunker fuel has been mostly contained by authorities, the government has been facing public pressure to identify the owners of the overturned barge called Gulfstream and the disappeared tugboat named Solo Creed. But the Prime Minister is tonight advising the nation that there is simply not enough confirmed information to take legal action. The confirmation of ownership has so far not been had to the satisfaction of the government. If legal action has to be taken, the government must be satisfied that we have pertinent and credible information as to who the perpetrators are and where liability lies. Nevertheless, Dr. Rowley assures that attempts are still ongoing to confirm the ownership of the vessels. In a Sunday expose, CNC3 News confirmed that the tugboat belonged to a director of a network of Panamanian companies accused of transporting oil from Venezuela. However, while Augustine Jackson confirmed his ownership of Melage Offshore Corporation, he denied any connection to the Solo Creed or Gulfstream which were involved in the spill. The Prime Minister is condemning Kamala Prasad Bissessa for failing to meet with the government on crime while finding time to entertain St. Lucia's opposition leader, whom he called Tropical Trump. Last evening, Dr. Keith Rowley hosted his Conversations with the Prime Minister series in San Fernando. In his opening address, he lamented the crime crisis in this country. However, Dr. Rowley pointed out that to this day, the UNC still has not named its team for the long-awaited crime talks with the government. Kamala Prasad Bissessa said the meeting will only happen if Dr. Rowley comes in person. However, last evening he dismissed that position as nonsense as he criticized Prasad Bissessa for making time for St. Lucia's opposition leader, whom he said has no moral authority to advise this country. But they're sitting down with the trust in it. As if St. Lucia, who had Chastenay in their government to run their country, throw him out of office unceremoniously, but in Trinidad to try to tell us how to run Trinidad. No thanks, Tropical Trump. The opposition is hitting back at the Prime Minister for what they described as his disparaging remarks about St. Lucia's opposition leader, Alan Chastany. Speaking with CNC3 News outside the parliament today, Orupuch East MP Dr. Rudal Munilal said Chastany was in Trinidad and Tobago to participate in a Commonwealth Parliamentary Association meeting and public accounts committees. He says he was subsequently invited to the UNC's anti-crime talks by the opposition leader. Dr. Munilal says he was disturbed to hear Dr. Rowley describe a regional counterpart as, quote, tropical Trump. To be treated with that level of disrespect by the sitting prime minister to what really was a former CARICOM colleague um, is very disgusting, but it is, uh, you know, understandable given Dr. Rowley's, you know, past with his level of arrogance. After hearing about Dr. Rowley's criticism, Chastany issued a statement where he reiterated his belief that crime is not a national but regional issue. He urged Dr. Rowley to take his remarks as a collective call to action rather than an individual criticism. However, St. Augustine MP Khadij Amin says the Prime Minister should stop paying attention to the opposition and focus on his crime-fighting efforts. The question for Rowley is what are you doing about crime? The opposition, uh, we are engaging people, we are asking people to come forward with solutions. It is really, this is really Dr. Rowley's job and he has failed tremendously. Up to yesterday we had a murder in the middle of Port Espin, our capital city. Meanwhile, Naparima MP Rodney Charles says Dr. Rowley has no say on who the UNC works with to develop an anti-crime plan to help Trinidad and Tobago. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister is not saying any more than necessary on the SSA and the replacement of the agency's head. He's been careful with his responses to the media, the public, and now to the Parliament as he faced questions from the opposition today. John Haynes has this story. Madam Speaker, I am not prepared to engage in any debate on this matter. Prime Minister Rowley continues to hold his words close to his chest on the removal of SSA head Major Roger Best. All he's saying is matters will take their course. Now which matters, though, remain unclear. 
because the Prime Minister would not answer Dr. Rudal Munilal's questions, asking if BEST was the subject of a police investigation. I'm not prepared to discuss confidential police work with you or anybody. That's called tipping off. And no matter how the Orapuch East MP tried to squeeze more information from the Prime Minister, he remained strategic in his replies. From information and or advice from the Toronto Tobago Police Service. Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, the Cabinet received no advice from the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. The Cabinet received information from the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. Or he curtly shut him down. An intelligence gathering work of the Strategic Services Agency have been suspended by the recent removal of the head of the Strategic Services Agency. Prime Minister. No. Would the Prime Minister indicate whether there is a concern by the government that critical surveillance and intelligence work could be disrupted? Prime Minister. No. And that tight-lipped attitude also extended to the Minister of National Security, who also declined any further comment on the SSA. Should there be a GSE into the firing of the former SSA director? Now, the UNC has written to the chairman of the Joint Select Committee on National Security, Keith Scotland, asking for an urgent meeting to be convened on the issue. Kijan Haynes, CNC3 News. All right, thank you very much, Kijan. Let's hand you over now to K. Marie to see what's coming up in the weather. While some parts of Trinidad observe cloudy conditions, the rest of the country experience a mostly sunny day. But things could cool in the coming days as rainfall may be on the horizon. I'll tell you more right after the break. He hit me. Will CG United cover this? Don't worry. Remember when I was in that competitive arm wrestling circuit? Ah! Baby. I did feel bad crushing all those arms and dreams. So I took them all out for ice cream. And then we got crushed. <laughs> anyway, CG United handled my claims fast. That explains the arm. The best cover for the best value. CG United. Good like that. Ferrera Optical is inside Massey Stores, Gulfview and Marabella. Explore our bold and trendy collections of eyewear. Experience the latest lens technology. Earn and redeem points with your Massey card at Ferrera Optical inside Massey Stores, Gulfview and Marabella. Encash is a mobile wallet that gives users the convenience of making digital payments. You can use Encash with any local debit card or credit card to pay anyone and or any business on Encash no matter who they bank with. It's as easy as scan, pay, done. Yes, I accept Encash. I accept Encash. I accept Encash. Find businesses that accept Encash with the nearby business feature. Visit Encash.com to learn more. Download the app and create your wallet today. It's as easy as scan, pay, done. Get the best catch at Southern Food Basket with our great deals this Lenten season. Broccoli, $16.95 per pound. Iceberg lettuce, $12.95 each. Carrot, $28.95 per pound. Salt and mackerel, $32.95 per pound. Crown parboiled rice, 8 kg, $64.95. Eve mac and cheese, 3 for $90.95. Brunswick pink salmon, 418 gram, $49.95. Richport tuna flakes in water, 3 packs, $17.95. No name toilet paper, 2 bales, $87.95. Firebright powder laundry detergent, 850 gram, 2 for $19.95. Get the best catch with our great deals this Lenten season at Southern Food Basket, Coffee Street, San Fernando, SS Erin Road, Pinal, St. Charles Village, Princess Town, and Southern Main Road, Point Fortin. Forget about bucket lists. We want to know what's on your best life list. Vacation, education, renovation, celebration. Live your best life with Island Finance. Visit a branch near you or islandfinancetrinidad.com and live your best life now. You can depend on Island Finance. Subject to credit approval and documents verification.
Jonas, your first comedy bacchanal in over four years. Randy Glasgow Productions Alternative After Carnival Festival is returning to Center Point Mall in Sherbonus. Sunday, March 10th, 6 p.m. Two persons on one ticket featuring Kenneth Seepersad, The Drunken Saint, The Maco Media Crew, Kwame Weeks, The Midgets, Gabriel Bridge Mohan, The Bacchanal Sisters, Larry Joseph. They're not coming. I find you just always wait until I'm in the road to ask me if I come in. The Trial of the Century with Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro and more. Get your two persons on one ticket today before they're all gone at Advertise Outlets Only. For more information, call the 24-hour hotline at 774-5555. Shaguanas, you host the grand finale. The nation is coming for the alternative after Carnival Festival, Sunday, March 10th. In business news, economist Professor Roger Hussein says while the central bank has reported that this country's unemployment rate measured 3.2 percent in the third quarter of 2023, it must be looked at in the context of the labor force participation rate. Meanwhile, U.S. $250,000 has been donated by the Development Bank of Latin America and the Caribbean to assist with the Tobago oil spill. Andrea perez Sobas tells us more in tonight's Business Watch. The central bank stated in its latest economic bulletin for January 2024 that the country's unemployment rate measured 3.2 percent in the third quarter of 2023, but economist Professor Roger Hussein believes it must be looked at in the context of the labor force participation rate. Hussein says he has been observing that the unemployment rate is coming down, but explain what also needs to be looked at. The number of people who are participating in the labor market is actually falling. So that you have to look at the people that are economically inactive as well. And this is something that policymakers in Trinidad and Tobago have not been paying sufficient attention to in terms of what I read in the newspapers, in terms of a formal assessment of these economically inactive people. The Economist notes that many people are seeking work in the informal sector to make ends meet, and this should be examined by the relevant authorities. Migrating from formal employment into the hustle sector, the informal sector, is not always the best option in terms of decency of work. And another aspect of it is that when some people drop off out of the labor market, they may be joining gangs. Now, we don't have formal data that quantify the amount of people that actually drop out of the labor market and may possibly go into gangs. Hossein was speaking on Morning Brew on Wednesday. CAF Development Bank of Latin America and the Caribbean has donated U.S. $250,000, which will assist in alleviating the effects of the oil spill that has affected the coast of Tobago, damaged beaches, reefs, and threatened the local tourism industry. In a letter addressed to Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley, the executive president of CAF, Sergio Diaz Granados, expressed the solidarity of the institution with the effects of the oil spill on the coast of Tobago. In a statement posted on its website on Wednesday, Granados says the bank offers all its technical and financial tools to support the government in facing the effects of the oil spill on the country's coast and achieving a prompt solution to the problem. The Tobago oil spill last month has seen oil reach as far as Bonnier. And now for a look at today's energy and forex prices. Andrea Perez Sobers, CNC3 Business Watch. Gamer with water restrictions in effect. I know some of us cannot watch, wash our vehicles. So I'm hoping for a little rainfall so I can just park it outside and get some help. <laughs> yes, that may be a good idea. We'll be able to do that not tomorrow. 
tomorrow, but maybe by Friday there should be some rainfall. So let me tell you what you can expect to come. Now, once again, most areas across Trinidad and Tobago experience predominantly sunny conditions today. Now, this was as a result of a deep layered rich pattern experience across the region and that influenced weather patterns. Now, today's maximum high temperatures with 32.3 degrees Celsius in Trinidad and 30.8 degrees Celsius in Tobago. Now, after all that heat, the Met Office says tonight is expected to be mostly fair and cool. Now, minimum low temperatures are forecast to drop to 23 degrees Celsius in Trinidad and 24 degrees Celsius over under Sister Isle. However, by tomorrow, the Met Office has forecast another predominantly sunny and breezy day. But you can look out for some partly cloudy periods with few showers in some areas. Now, I know that's good news for some of you out there. Now, tomorrow's maximum high temperatures are forecast to come in near 33 degrees Celsius in Trinidad and 32 degrees Celsius in Tobago. Now, to the seas now, please take note all marine interest spring tide is in effect. Now, this will remain until Wednesday, March 13. As such, marine users are asked to exercise caution, especially during high tides. Seas are forecast to be slight to moderate with waves up to two meters in open waters, while in sheltered areas, waves are set to remain less than one meter. Now, we're halfway through the week, so let's take a look at our five-day forecast. The Met Office says while sunny conditions remain in the coming days, it is forecast to become partly cloudy and breezy at times. As well, there are some showers coming in by Friday. So guys, if you have the luxury of heading to the seas during the work week, then please be cautious of those high tides. And for those of us that are not so lucky, let's remain hydrated, especially as we continue to experience those warm conditions during the dry season. Now, that's all for me, guys. Back to you. I like how she said those who have the luxury. Heading to the beach journey. We don't have that. We'll stay hydrated. Don't. That's right. <laughs> Thank you so much, K Marie. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Things don't always go as expected. Be ready with Trinry for auto, home, business, and group life. Call us at 800 Trin or visit trinry.com today. Huge insurance premium. Pay your premiums bit by bit with FlexiPay from Trinry. For more manageable auto, home and commercial insurance payments, call us at 800 Trin or visit trinry.com today. Trinry, premier insurance coverage for less. Recession have you down? Don't lose hope. Head on down to Tire Clinic for the recession deals. That should big savings with our road hazard warranty on download to meet one Falcon Tires. Available at Tire Clinic, Cuba, Chaguanas, and Pleasance Park. Tire Clinic, a tire for every need. Call 636-8973 or 636-2958. Did the holiday spending put a dent in your cash? Well, hear what? Top up your pocket in the cash splash promotion. Win over $200,000, including over 65000 in our weekly draws. Well, hear what to do. Grab any cool, cool, turbo energy drink, fruta, cool kids, viva, or oasis water. Then visit Facebook or Instagram at cool, cool Caribbean or fruta fruit juice official for more details. Let's top up your pocket with the cash splash promotion. Flavor. Zillish. Level up your snack. Chicle Show Limited, the Caribbean's largest manufacturers of plain and printed paper bags, leaders in plastic bags, vermicelli, split piece powder, and greaseproof paper, ideal for doubles, french fries, and sandwiches. Supplying stores nationwide. For quality products, trust Chicle Show Limited, 665-3336. Ferrera Optical is inside Massey Stores, Gulfview, and Marabella. Explore our bold and trendy collections of eyewear. Experience the latest lens technology. Earn and redeem points with your Massey card at Ferrera Optical inside Massey Stores, Gulfview, and Marabella.
attractive flavor. Zellish, level up your snack. Reboot Sport Drink. Revive, rehydrate, recover. Cooking, exercising, and even sleeping are considered some forms of stress relievers. But what about playing games on your phone? Not a big fan of it, but millions of people play games as a way to de-stress. But is this good for your health? Tonight we explore in Wellness Wednesday. Wellness Wednesday, brought to you by BioStrat. Get what you need naturally. Mobile games continue to be a huge seller across all app stores. And while there's a variety, each person may prefer one over the other. The reason may not just be for entertainment, but also for some health purposes. Well, according to medical studies, mobile games can have both positive and negative effects on your overall health. Approximately 70% of those playing games on mobile and other devices claim that it reduces their stress in just a few minutes. Even games considered violent, such as Call of Duty Mobile or PUBG. Mobile gamers over the age of 18 even admitted to feeling less anxious and less isolated, especially in games where you may have to use your microphone to communicate with teammates all over the world. But the positives don't stop there. Mobile gaming can also enhance cognitive abilities, especially games rooted in problem solving and expanding your vocabulary. And let's not forget hand-eye coordination and fine motor skills while you develop muscle memory and maintain dexterity. But just like everything else, there are cons that can negatively affect your physical health. Extended periods of mobile gaming can contribute to repetitive stress injuries when it comes to your joints and even eye strain. You can also become addicted, which may lead to you suffering from sleep deprivation or becoming so engrossed that you start living an inactive lifestyle. So just be mindful as you continue enjoying mobile games. Remember to avoid letting it get out of hand as you keep stress at bay. Akash Samaru, CNC3 News. Wellness Wednesday, brought to you by BioStrat. Get what you need naturally. The irony of that story just before the sports That's cast. That's right. Uh, Jossie, you're going to reveal to us tonight, what's that game you play on your mobile phone all the time? Well, Ludo for sure, a little bit of all fours. In fact, anything sport related, sometimes even some classic tennis. Let's tell you what's coming up after the break. Jordan Duque remains on course to defend her Tranquility Open women's singles title. And an up and down day in the world of Real Madrid. I'll explain why after this break. Only Biostrath gives your body more than 60 of the essential nutrients it needs every day in a product that's 100% natural for stronger immunity, enhanced focus, increased...